All right, guys, welcome back. I uh, hope you got a chance to check out that running assessment video. If you did, you saw that I had some troubles with hip stability, with that hip popping out when I added that single leg stance with the leg swings. Um, getting a little hip pop, hip action that I don't want. So I want to try to reinforce some of those motor patterns and stability issues before I really get heavy into my running volume. So first thing I like to look at is mobility. Um, you, there's a lot of different tests that you're going to have to rule out to, to see if it's mobility where at in the capsule. Is it hip? Is it back? Is it knee? Is it is it ankle? Um, so I've done some of those things. For me, my issues are primarily going to be hip extension, tightness in some anterior capsule, hip flexor area, and, and then rotation, internal a little bit more than external, um, but restrictions in both ways of, of my in and out rotation of my hip. So those are what I'm going to focus on. Um, I would highly recommend seeing a PT or somebody that, that's knowledgeable in that area to help you kind of tease some of that stuff out if you're having trouble. Because um, it's important to target the right things so that you're not wasting time. So, you know, for me, these are going to be the most important. That's what I'm going to focus on. So the first thing I like to look at, let's improve the tissue quality around that hip joint. So if I'm having trouble in so many directions, uh, a lot of restrictions in there, I want to I work that out. So um, you're going to want to grab something to do some myofascial type work. Um, foam roller, lacrosse ball, softball. Um, all I have in my apartment right now is a tennis ball. It's a little soft, but I think it'll do the job. So what we're going to do is we're going to literally mash some of that muscular tissue. And some people will tell you you're, you're moving the, the fascial linings, you're breaking up adhesions. Um, it may just be that we're affecting neurology around that joint. Whatever it does, it helps with some of my mobility stuff, so I like it. Um, we don't have a lot of literature to back any of this stuff up yet, but it seems through clinical evidence and, and just day-to-day -day, what I see tends to work pretty well. So um, it's nice for an at-home type program. So I'm going to take my tennis ball and I'm going to hit those hip external rotators. So we're coming into this area, finding my hip bone, finding my sit bone, that muscle that runs in between there. I'm going to hit some of those external rotators. Kinds of good stuff down there, piriformis, gamali, quadratus, and we're going to roll through that. You may have to change the position of your knee, you may have to cross over, whatever you got to do, roll around and find some stuff. What you'll find are some tender areas, some areas that do some crunching, some snapping, that's where you want to spend your time. Okay, when you find one, come across it, roll around on it, whatever you want to do to try to break some of that stuff up, spend a couple minutes there. From there, I like to move to my hamstring. I'm going to find that sit bone, my ischial tuberosity. I'm going to get the ball or the foam roll right on that tube. And then I'm going to oscillate back and forth again. I'm looking for some of those spots. From there, we can roll over to the outside. You can hit your IT band. Get on the outside of that band that runs down the outside of your leg. Do some work there. And then an important one for me is going to be that quad and hip flexor through the front. So I'm going to hit that this way, again, tennis ball down there, and you can do some work in there a couple minutes. You can add some movements, you can pin that thing down, smash it, add some foot movements up and down or back and forth, you can just roll around, it's not real comfortable, find some spots that are tender, do some work on them, try to bust them up. Okay, once you're satisfied with the quality of the tissue there, you're going to want to do some type of mobility warm-up type thing. Um, so some type of active dynamic warm-up. We're going to do some of that in our, in our future video series. Um, so that's what I would do next. Get, get the tissues moving. So I mashed some tissue down. Now let's move. Let's get some exercise going. From now, let's do some focus strengthening. Um, I want to reinforce motor patterns to the areas of weakness. So if my hip abductors, external rotators aren't stabilizing me in that standing position, Let's start simple, get that signal from the brain trying to reinforce that pattern, get those neural pathways kind of connected um, in an easy way. So we're going to start on the floor, laying down, um, about as easy as you can get, but it's a good way to start. So you can lose the ball. First one I like to start with is a simple clamshell type exercise. So what you're going to do in this position, key here is to get started in a good position. Shoulders are stacked, one shoulder over the other hips are stacked, one hip over the other. You don't want to be leaning back or leaning too far forward because that's going to that's gonna throw you off. From there, knees are staying together and we're just lifting that hip up in the air without moving the back. Okay. As you get better at this, you can add a band, you can add a weight for some resistance, but it's a good place to start. Next exercise I often go to is just a sideline hip abduction. So again, I'm laying on my side, feet are straight ahead, 
hips are stacked, toes stay up straight ahead or point slightly downward, and I'm going to lift. The key here is to make sure that toe and hip don't rotate upwards. I want to stay straight ahead as I lift, and I'm squeezing those hip abductors, keeping the back stacked as I go. We'll work that there. That'll work. My last one that I often do is a, a hip figure four position. So what we'll do, I'll show this from a couple angles here. We're gonna lay on our stomachs. You're gonna bring your hip up into a figure four type position, and then you're gonna lift. So you're gonna lift that hip up off of the ground. You're not gonna get a ton of motion on this one because you're just trying to lift and squeeze. Okay, this is from straight ahead. Again, I'm going into a figure four to bring that hip up into that position, and then I'm lifting and squeezing without moving the back as you go. those three exercises are a good start. Um, I usually do something real simple like three sets of ten. Again, I'm looking for neural changes. So I want to, enough that I reintegrate that, not enough that it fatigues everything out, but enough that I'm, I'm communicating the brain to those muscles, hitting the exact spots I want. These are all about technique, all about form. If they're not done right, you're not getting that neural pathway that you want. So real focused on technique, couple sets of ten to fatigue, get those muscles firing again. Um, in the next video, we're going to start to progress that from a laying down position um, to on all fours or kneeling as we start to work back towards standing up that chain. So um, be, stay tuned, check these out, and uh, we'll keep you, get you ready to run.